you know, where does your style come from? Because you can do a three-hour show like, like Billy Connolly, but it's not the same content. When I first started, it was... Um, I just know jokes, really. <laughs> That's where it comes from. <laughs> right. It's basically like, when I first started, I used to try and, you know, I'd try and do what I thought a comic did, which was just come out and do set things, and I just got bored of it, and it just didn't right. kind of fit right. Um, and what was the breakthrough? Well, cos I started in Newcastle, and, the, and London was the place where... You know, London, everyone does five minutes, ten minutes, and then they're 20 minutes, and they build up to yeah. it, and it's, you know... Some people would spend years just going around doing the five-minute slot. Well, up in Newcastle, there wasn't any clubs, so you could turn up and you'd, turn, you'd go to a pub and say, we want to put on a show. You know, there was only about five acts, so right. you had to keep reusing the same people, so you had to, there had to be a turnover. And I used to host, and because it was the same crowd each week, I just, just talk to the audience. I just think, oh, what's funny? Go on and just, you know, just just be funny rather than write a load of jokes and, and then go... Because that, that took too long. And then when I came to London, I got... I did loads of warm-ups, TV, right. which people don't like you talking about, you know? They don't like right. the idea of, you know, there's a... You know, before no, the show somebody starts, else. somebody comes out and goes, could you laugh at... <laughs> this shit. <laughs> yeah. It's a specific so, sort of skill, isn't it? Very, yeah, because you can't be... If you're too good, you get the sack. If you're rubbish, <laughs> yeah. you get the sack. Yes. Because they want the audience up. But the worst crime you can... And it happened to me a couple of times and, you know, somebody had a quiet oh, word. Somebody too good. Could, if, you, if you go, right, we're going to go back to the show, and the audience goes... <laughs> not the show. <laughs> oh, not the show again. That's so... So I did that, and, and, and those were literally three, you know, sometimes four-hour recordings and of, of, you know, like sitcoms and stuff where they do the, they do the uh, scene, somebody had fluffed their lines and so they'd have to start again. Right. So you were literally, you were on and off and on and off and you just come on, chat away, and then... So if you tried to do a gag, if you tried to do a gag or a, something that was, you know, that had any kind of length to it, as soon as you got into it, you just got on a roll and they'd go, all right, uh, and start again. Or you, you know, or, you'd, or, or a light would blow, and you would, you know, they'd be changing the light. So you're trying to make people laugh, right, right. but at the same time, you got two blokes on a step ladder with a big hook trying to, you know. <laughs> so it was kind of the, the audience are kind of doing this all the time. So I started to, I'd start, I'd like comment on that. So it, it started to become, rather than me going, this is what I'm going to talk about, and you will listen to it. I kind of go. Right, I've got to make two blokes change and a light funny, <laughs> and right, then as wow. soon as as soon as you start doing that, it just, you know, and then within that, that would spark off ideas, and and I started doing that, playing around. So really, by the time I was, you know, by the time I moved to London and started yeah, doing yeah. gigs, the idea of going, this is my act, was, it wasn't really an act. It was just me just. Dicking about, really. So, and <laughs> then describe your yeah, act. That, that is it. Is it dicking literally about? dicking about. Um, and the same. And then when I started doing doing the longer shows, I kind of thought, oh, you've got to have a show and structure it. And actually, nine times out of ten, nobody knows when you're doing a bit of material or just right. improvising. So I didn't really. So I went well. I won't worry about that. I'll just do what. As long as people are laughing, it doesn't matter really. So, so that's how it, it slowly evolved. The yeah. first time I saw you was, uh, I think I've talked about this night before, at Leighton Live in Edinburgh. Yeah. And just explain what Leighton Live is. Um, it's sort of a fight where a bit of comedy breaks <laughs> out now and again. Yeah, right. I've seen a... people be. I saw Daniel Kitson uh, booed off in I think less than five seconds. <laughs> yeah. And he was great. Yeah. That was the thing. If they didn't like you, the second that you walked out, if you even showed like a tiny little bit right. of just a, just a, a flicker of nerves, they just they were like sharks, like one drop of blood, <laughs> and they could see them all. And yeah, and sometimes people were already getting booed off before they'd even got to the mic, you know. So it was that sort of. But there was a few of us. Like I used to do it. I used to do it quite a lot, you know. I'd do it sort mm. of four nights a week, and it got to the point where. After a while, they just didn't bother trying. I mean, they'd still shout and and join in, but 
they just didn't bother because they just went, they just knew I didn't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> just be throwing stuff and I go, hey. Well, so, I think that the night yeah. I saw you, you found a policeman in the audience. Oh, that's right. And you yeah, got him yeah, up yeah. on stage and interviewed him and then you sent him backstage. Yeah. And then you said, are there any criminals in the That's audience? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got people up who had had committed crimes, yeah. from ranging from parking fines to one guy said he'd committed murder. That's right. And and the weird thing about that room was is that this guy looked like he'd committed murder, and everyone went, yeah, yeah, we can. <laughs> That's yeah. right. He's in every night. Yeah. And and we got the audience to decide the severity of the crimes, put them in a lineup. Yep. Muddled them up, and then the policeman came back on. And you invented a song on the spot called don't Rearrange the Criminals. I don't remember that. It was fantastic. You had everyone singing Rearrange the Criminals. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. And then the policeman came out, and he had to... He had to put, put them, them back into order. In, in order. And he did it. And he did, he did it. it, yeah. But when I sent the policeman backstage... Right. Because there was a band at the end of the night, and they're fond of, uh, you know, illegal substances. OK. So, all of a sudden, <laughs> one of the, like, the drummers leaning out, and he's like, all right, what's he doing? Oh, he's got a... He's like, he's got criminals. You've got a copper. He's got a copper on the stage. He's sending, he's sending them back. He's sending them back. So the band are all there. Like that. Down the toilet. Just, yeah. It was like a drugs bust was going on. And of course, like, you know, I came off going, how funny was that? And they're all sat there like this. You spoiled our night. Yeah, it's a great night of comedy. And it's gone. That's the thing. You do these things. And I, I, I know you film. A lot of yeah, yeah, new we stuff, do now. The, yeah, they yeah. just dis these events just, just go, the, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I know. Occasionally, you you'll see a rather snooty journalist um, go along to see your show two nights in a row in an attempt to prove that you're not just making it up yeah. as you go along, and they're always thwarted. They always just get a bit confused. Because what I do is I sort of you know if I've got a, a story or a or, or an idea, I kind of go into it, and then or I'll improvise something. And I think, well, oh, I'll do that again tomorrow night. So the journalist will come back the next night and then something which was 100% improvised the night before, I'll kind of go back it, I'll go, the, the, the idea of that, so I'll take it. But it'll go off in a completely different way. So it's only really the, you know, there might only be 30 seconds or a minute of that thing from, so, but it's still, it's not, it's not improvised and it's not material. It's just, no. it's just an idea that I go, oh, I'll play with that again. And then, so they sat there kind of going, oh, but that, there was 30 seconds of it that he did that last night, but it, but it comes in and goes out in a different way. So it's because it's constantly, but they, they can't, it annoys them that there's no lines. It's all just, <laughs> yeah, but I quite like that. <laughs>